Sometimes the lights go out, but the show must go on. Mary Gets It. Hello, welcome to Mary Gets It and Mary Pasco. With me as always is Bruce Leah, the Chuck. We are feeling quite melancholy today. We recently learned that our friend Maddie Kay is no longer with us, and I will be honest, I'm having a lot of trouble processing everything, and I'm having trouble (laughs) doing this show today, and part of me thought well, I can just skip a day. <laughs> I'm sure you would understand. But I feel like there's so much that should be said. And uh, I want to also do something of a tribute to Maddie Kay. I love you. I miss you. We all miss you very much. And you you changed us all for the better. I remember maybe it was the first time I'd ever seen you perform. I want to say it was at Universal Bar and Grill. Could have been at Liquid Zoo, but I think it was Universal Bar and Grill. And you were killing it as you do (laughs) jamming on that guitar singing them emo songs and you know I love emo and it you know it moved me of course and I'll never forget Maddie you said you know I'm just a person just like you (laughs) I'm up here doing this but we're all we're all just people and that's that was one of those kind of like a light bulb moment (laughs) where I was like oh yeah we do kind of since we're up there on stage we do seem a little bit mm, not not like a normal person but we are (laughs) just like I was saying on the last show about my my friend that we called Ted <laughs> and how since he's in the public eye people don't really treat him like a person but maybe that's the problem maybe that is the overarching problem that's happening right now People are very, very mean to each other, whether it's a celebrity or a, a classmate, a coworker, your server at the restaurant you're dining at. People can be so cruel, and l- life is really hard. <laughs> life is hard, just as it is, and. We all, we all have our struggles and we all try really hard to just kind of get through it and find that happiness. So life is really all about finding your happiness and sometimes it's very difficult to find. And sometimes you do find happiness like Matt did with his beautiful wife, Jessica. And my heart is broken for you, Jessica. I I can't even express how sorry I am. And I know that, that Matt was madly in love with you. He always will be. And the, this, just the sad, thing of it is 
is that sometimes happiness isn't even enough to to keep some of our beloved friends on this plane of existence and you know a lot of people want to throw around <laughs> the the phone number for the suicide prevention hotline but as it's been pointed out in the past by many people it's a uh, it's not so easy it's not it's not necessarily safe uh, from what I understand now I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from calling that number if you feel like you want to call it please go out right ahead but I also know that a lot of people are afraid to call it because they don't know the repercussions of that phone call I don't know I could be saying the wrong thing here but but the thing is a lot of people as soon as they hear that you're hurting it, it can go really badly they they can pretty much uh, lock you up against your will force drugs down your throat take away your rights <laughs> and that is not okay it's not okay so why would someone want to go seek help if that's what might happen honestly it's something that needs to change it needs to be okay to feel sad and it needs to we need to be able to talk openly about this without people immediately wanting to put someone on suicide watch which like you know they take away your shoelaces <laughs> they don't let you use a fork to eat it's uh not gonna make people come forward and get the help that might help <laughs> so i i don't really have an answer here and i hate that i i want to be solutions oriented something like this is bigger than me and I, I don't know how to help really obviously I I didn't help Matt and of course <laughs> I have to carry that with me now um, just like all all of us so many of us were here with him we knew you know you can, I mean, the thing is, so many of us, artists especially, it seems, I don't know why, are very sad. <laughs> and it's kind of like, we know, we know that we're struggling, but what can we do? Because we're over here dealing with our own stuff. And so how can we help everybody else? And... I, I, again, don't have the answer for that. But we do what we can. And today, Bruce, Leah, and I are here. And we're telling you that we are here to listen anytime you want to talk about anything. And we guarantee that talking to us <laughs> will never, ever cause you to get locked up against your will because we don't believe in that so i hope you're doing great <laughs> and if you want to talk i'm here you can hit me up on facebook or twitter or whatever you want to do and bruce leah is an excellent listener <laughs> she doesn't talk much but <laughs> she's the best you know, I used to really think, like, how can, how can I be happy? I want to be happy. 
I see all these ladies walking around and they're so happy. <laughs> and so, well, w one of the biggest changes for me was um, giving up alcohol and, you know, etc. And just doing that straight edge clean living. I got to tell you, honestly, you... I turned to the bottle when I was sad, you know, because I wanted to kind of shut things off and I, I feel something different than what I was feeling at the time. And yes, it worked. I felt very <laughs> different, but it was obviously, I knew it was only a little temporary band-aid. It wasn't even any kind of solution at all and here's the kicker it made me more depressed it actually physically depresses you like <laughs> it I don't know why more people don't talk about that like when you're the next day you just feel sad and your brain feels mushy like all day and the the saddest thoughts I've ever had in my life were when I was drinking. And, you know, Matt and I are, are very similar people. We, we both love... I'm going to just talk about them in present tense because I want to. <laughs> we both love to write and make people laugh and and sing songs, write music. And, you know, we are just in many ways very similar. And I was just telling Ryan, and it was hard for me to say, but really the... The only big difference that I can see between the two of us is that five years ago I stopped drinking and it changed my entire life. And it's not easy. I still think about drinking a lot. I think about, I work at a restaurant, you know, people order wine from me. And sometimes it looks really good, but I have to just remember that it actually made me really sad. And I wish that I had talked about it sooner, more openly. Who knows if maybe Matt might have heard me say that because I never talked about it to him. I've never really talked about it to many people. Part of me feels like I shouldn't even be talking about it right now to you. But, hey, if this helps one person, then I don't care about what how it makes me look. Because it's m more important, it's more important to keep you here. And I know it's not easy to be here. It's. It's very hard. But you never know what tomorrow might bring. Or the next year. You never know who you might meet. You, you might... You don't know who, who needs you out there. And... I'm... I'm so grateful... That I've been able to turn things around in my life and I of course I wish that things had gone differently for Matt but he will be loved and remembered forever and ever we all love you so much Matt and your music will be remembered forever your your genius will live on. Your words will live on. <laughs> that last Facebook post 
was so haunting. He was talking about Bukowski and how he he wishes he'd never read Bukowski. Now I I've never read Bukowski, but Matt was saying basically that he kind of <laughs> felt like he had to like like be in that whole like drinking and like that the romanticized writer in LA lifestyle and I totally get that a hundred percent I <laughs> I used to read Hunter S. Thompson and feel the same way that that I had to be like him like exactly like him and rest in peace Hunter we we know how that turned out so thank goodness I moved on from <laughs> that whole thing um I actually <laughs> I I was I was thinking about everything that Matt said about Bukowski and how how directly related it was to me and Hunter and I looked up some of my writing this this was when I was 22 years old I'm going to share it with you <laughs> You can definitely hear the Hunter S. Thompson influence. And here we go. When I was living in Boston, I got to know a lot of people. I lived in Back Bay for a year, searching for Mercy Street, always searching. I had a roommate, but we never really spoke. Much of the time, I was just alone. It was me and my thoughts. That's what it's like now, here in L.A. I have a studio apartment. I have some friends, some dates, some acquaintances. But sometimes I'd rather just be alone here, spiraling along into a haze, reviewing the past 22 years of my life, trying to figure out what all this means. I've had so many wild thoughts in my life, thoughts about life, death, the meaning of everything. I was telling my sister Teresa about this the other day. The thing is, I'm here now. This is now almost as if there never was a before, a before me. And it's okay. I wasn't here before, apparently, and it was okay. So will it be okay again when this all comes to an end? You see, I had this experience on that trip across the country it was just me laying on the bed of our hotel room Kaylee was in the bathtub I was so at peace so still probably completely immobilized at that point <laughs> and I felt okay colors were swirling around like they are now my body felt numb and tingly like now I felt free and yet encased at the same time in a cuddly warm box somewhere. Quite often I have long conversations with God. I feel as though I have these epiphanies about death, the meaning of life, etc., etc. I suddenly reach that place where I feel so still, so soft. I think this will be what death is like. To someone who has been afraid of death her entire life, this calming is quite a religious experience. It had only been a week since I last shared that crazed fear about dying, about there being nothingness afterward. I couldn't even talk to Kaylee about it because it was scaring me so much. Then there was that day. Kaylee in the bathtub. Me feeling it. So what is it like? Just flowing peacefully in something like a twilight hour. It tingles, feels as if my entire being is tingling, but there is no body, just this, this. I don't know how to explain it. I used to cry all the time when I'd imagine this, but now I feel it and it's okay. It's going to be okay. 
I always remember those words Kaylee told me, the way she made me feel like believing in God was ridiculous, that there couldn't possibly be a heaven the way we'd imagined it as kids. Sometimes I think the same, and yet every time I find myself thinking this way, I, I'm suddenly overcome with a terrible feeling all over my body. Catholic guilt, perhaps? I feel as though I am the worst person in the world whenever I think God and heaven might not exist. But when I feel like they do exist, I feel almost ridiculous. It's such a difficult position to be in, especially when the most important people in your life vehemently contradict one another. Now, I wrote that a very long time ago and have since had many, many experiences that have cemented my belief in God and again this is not a podcast wherein I push my beliefs on you but just just for the record I wrote that when I was 22 and it's fictionalized too um this uh <laughs> it was a fictionalized trip across the country which I did when I moved here I drove across the country but it was just by myself and I just did it in three days because I couldn't wait to get to L.A. <laughs> but I I wrote this quote unquote novel <laughs> and inserted uh, a friend character named Kaylee based on a couple people <laughs> in my life. So anyway, long story short, I learned a lot from reading Hunter S. Thompson and I do really love that style of writing and I I I understand I really understand what Matt was saying like and that's why another reason why I feel like kind of like I shouldn't talk about my past so much because I don't you know I'm a role model <laughs> I don't want people to think that because I did some bad things in the past that maybe they should do them too because uh, they didn't turn out well for me I'm I'm here to tell you right now it <laughs> obviously everyone's gonna do what they want to do and we all kind of have to make our own mistakes I guess but I, well I don't know I'm here to tell you that there are some mistakes you don't have to make because I made them for you <laughs> so Oh, anyway, long story short, I'm happy to be sober and I'm happy to be with you right now, talking, hanging out. And I really, I, I try to make the podcast fun and funny and I just wasn't really feeling very funny today, but I knew that I wanted I wanted to bring some some levity to this episode. So I happened to find this <laughs> this book that I made. Who knows when? Maybe in like second or third grade, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's called My Narrow Escape by Mary Pasco. And the cover here has a turkey and a gentleman saying hallelujah next to it. So let us read. It was Thanksgiving. I was just walking, but suddenly I spied a hunter. I ran, and the hunter followed me. Oh, no. I came to a forest. I ran into it, but then I spied a trap. <gasps> a trap, I thought. I was so scared, I almost jumped out of my feathers. I saw another trap. Golly, I thought, there are traps everywhere. I fell into a trap. Night came. A hunter came to see if he had caught anything. He spotted me. Hallelujah, he shouted. <laughs> he carried me home. He set me down on a neatly set table. Why, Herb, said a woman named Alice, you caught one. Of course. What did you expect me to catch? Garfield? 
Oh, Herb, you know what I mean. Just put the darn turkey in the den where it'll get plucked. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Okay, Alice, he said, and I was on my way. Ack, ack, I said. Oh, shut up, you turkey, the man said, and he kept walking. He set me down on a table and said, Now don't move, I need to get something. And he left. <gasps> when he was out of sight, I ran. Come back, you, you turkey. Come back here. But I got away. <gasps> yeah. I learned my lesson. Never go out on Thanksgiving. And you know what? The man had a terrible Thanksgiving. He had no turkey. Ha <laughs> ha ha. The end. <laughs> Yay. My narrow escape. <laughs> As you can see, I've always been a writer and I've always been an animal lover. <laughs> oh, I'm really glad that we read that. I needed a little bit of lightness. <laughs> You know, Matt was a comedian as well as a singer, songwriter, musician, and he would definitely have wanted today's tribute show to have some jokey, happy, fun stuff. So, um, hey, in honor of Matty K, let's, oops, sorry, Bruce, <laughs> I just moved Bruce a little oddly there. Let's improvise. Just, uh, I, you know, I actually have absolutely no idea where this is going to go, to be honest. I'm still in a very strange headspace. But, hey, maybe Bruce wants to sing. What do you think, Bruce? You feel like singing a song? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's up for it. All right, cool. So, ladies and gentlemen... I give you, for Maddie K, Bruce's song. I am a Bruce dog. I like to sing my songs and sometimes get treats too. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I used to be in a rap group called Three Dog Night <laughs> With my brother and sister Yeah, that's Jiggy and Chewy But I'm basically like I'm like the Justin Timberlake of that group And now I'm on my own here in L.A. And those two, they live in Colorado, yo, oh, everybody wants to hang with the Bruce dog, Bruce dog, Bruce dog, even though her mom is really emotional all the time, so if you want to hang with the Bruce dog, Bruce dog, just me some treats some treats bring me some maybe possibly pumpkin spice or something else nice dog to eat great job Bruce Leah yay Amazing how she can throw her voice like that all the way up to the microphone. <laughs> mm. Yeah, back in the day when I was trying to figure out how to be happy, I would be like, girls with dogs always seem happy. <laughs> and it's true, Bruce brings me so much happiness, and I'm so ho -ho 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 glad that she's here to comfort me in my times of need, and mm, I love you, Bruce. And I love you, all my friends. Thank you so much for being so cool. You matter. I love you. And I want to give, well, gosh, I was going to give special shout-outs, but honestly, there are so many of you that I, I don't, 
I don't want to leave anyone out. Everyone, everyone who's been helping me through this loss and everyone who's feeling this loss as well and everyone who's out there making art that's, that's helping us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much. And I love you. And Maddie Kay, we love you and we miss you. And we will never forget you. Yeah. Goodbye, Maddie Kay. We love you.